Half of what they teach you and uh, the very first thing they teach you is about professionalism and business and um, they teach you how to market your idea and where to go, how to start, who to talk to, how to basically create your own idea and start your own company. To be able to go from, hey, I think this is a good idea to this is how I'm going to make my idea work and this is who I think can use my product. You would not get that uh, opportunity outside of an environment such as CAPS. Typical definition of an incubator accelerator are these programs that provide resources, business coaches, um, uh, legal coaching on a successful startup of a company. And so he said, can we do that with the talent we have here, this, this small ecosystem we created of having business and entrepreneurship talent and design and technology and engineering, bioscience. We have this talent. Can we create a gathering place for them all to blend together and leverage those unique differences to come up with what we call high-speed advances. We were on a, a team of architects that designed the original building and had a portion of the space left over. Blue Valley came to us last year and said so they wanted to finish it off into an accelerator type environment that would allow uh, groups of students ranging from one to five to, to do more of a collaborative teaming. Early on we realized flexibility was key. The entire building is um, designed around flexibility and as we honed in on this space we really um, saw the importance of, of being ultra flexible. So we designed the space that would allow them to kind of define their environment as different teams formed. They could adjust to the projects that they were, they were taking on. They can have an idea, they can turn it into a dream, and the place can turn it into reality. We have a shop downstairs that has 3D printers where the kids can take um, from their, the design that's in their head and then they can create a 3D image for it on one of these computers and then we can print it on a 3D printer and, and then you have a prototype. A year or so ago, we started seeing students create products that were provisionally patentable. And our mentors in the area of law provided patent support for our students to fill out a provisional patent and file it with the patent office. Anything from prosthetic arms and trying to make those better to a better mosquito repellent to a football helmet that will position a, a spine that has less impact. It runs the gamut from web applications to physical products and businesses, which are all great successes, but I'll tell you at the end of the day, it's has that kid been transformed, right? Are they able to think this way now? Uh, the entrepreneurial thinker, the creative thinker, if you will, and where they're driving their own learning. We also saw in the world of industry, people telling us that entrepreneurship is the next revolution in our economic structure across the nation. And so what we did is we spent a lot of time with industry partners taking a look at how do we build an entrepreneurial type of a program, a program that would provide a space for students to take their ideas, go to a prototype, develop a proof of concept, and if it has enough legs, take it to a provisional patent and commercialize it. If you look at the student being the actual product, um, think about the transformation they're going from. From being locked down in their schools, um, binded up really in that hairball, if you will, release of that here and be able to follow that path of their own thinking, their own personal touch, and really have this awakening of Holy cow, I have incredible strengths that I've never discovered and incredible potential. I'm going to keep working to those. And once they get working on a strength-based model, that's when you see these kids come alive and engage in it and, and really start running with it. I always was an idea man, I'm creating ideas and inventions. I actually moved from Texas uh, to CAPS program just because uh, my mom told me about it and it looks really cool so we, uh, I moved up here with her and uh, started as soon as I got here uh, working on my idea for the headphones. Uh, we are creating a wireless in-ear sound piece receiver. Uh, it's called Whisper and it's going to be a wireless in-ear headphone.
the way that the strands communicate is actually really, really vital to the success of CAPS because if Trey hadn't been able to come down and work with me on this project, I would have never, ever come up with the idea of working on a project such as this. And it would have been really difficult for uh, Trey to find yeah, I mean, he, he knows all about the all about the circuit boards and uh, programming, and uh, that's not my specialty, and so the strands being able to, to uh, communicate is uh, very helpful, and allowing us to work together has made all the difference. Uh, we just had an event the other night where uh, we brought in businesses to where the kids from the accelerator pitched all of their ideas to um, local venture capital. These students will literally pitch their ideas in front of investors who will provide some seed money for them to be able to start building prototypes and proofs of concept of their ideas. So I had some mentors, one specifically, that became an angel investor of one of these kids' businesses. So now that's the next step. It, once a kid has a proof of concept, we have tapped into a whole underworld of entrepreneurs and VCs and angel investors, and it becomes very real very quickly. Project-based learning, I think, is, is really a benefit, especially to the way that, that a lot of prof professionals are working these days. Um, we're finding that companies are trying to become more innovative and more collaborative, and a project-based learning curriculum, I think, really feeds right into that and allows, allows the students to be comfortable in that environment and, and really uh, understand the importance of collaboration. What CAPS really looks to produce is students who will succeed in the business environment instead of um, a lot of high schools looking to produce the students that will succeed in college. CAPS just skips over that and says we need to produce students who are ready for the real world and because they'll have the skills they need for the real world they'll be fine going through college. And um, an opportunity like that does not happen anywhere else.